Hi, I'm Veronica Vance, and hey, it's fall, and there's still a lot to do at the zoo. We find out why the Whitney calls their third floor the ghost bar, and then we take a look at the ladies of Motown, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. So check this out, if you haven't been to the Detroit Zoo in a while, we've got three great reasons to come visit. A good old fashioned carousel ride, a brand new lion exhibit, and the sphere of science. Well, so Ron, you've got some really neat new exhibits here at the zoo. For instance, the carousel, it's so neat and it's all hand carved, I understand. Yes, it's wood hand carved. This is a very unique carousel. There's also brass and it's lit up at night. Really fabulous. We went a different route than most people do. Mm -hmm. We've got praying mantis and we've got poison dart frogs. We have something called a casuary, which is a very mysterious Australian bird. Huge bird like an ostrich. So it's all a bunch of different animals and, and really a piece of art. Again, all hand painted. This is hand very carved, unique. Yeah, can you imagine carving a praying mantis, no. especially this big, and then all of this incredible painting. Now how many artists worked on this? Well, there are quite a few, yeah. and we met them uh, over the course of the year that they were carving. Mm -hmm. And so far, everybody's loved it. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and then there are, what, what, 33 different animals, right. so right. kids have tons of choices. Lots of choice. Some of them are really big, some of them are smaller so that they don't scare kids. Mm -hmm. Just puts a smile on everyone's yeah. face. And so the, it's going to be open, what, uh, April through October, that's right. the, the plan, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be a little bit tough to do it in the winter. Yeah. This will also be available in the evenings for special events. Okay. And then is this included with admission or there's no, a little... This is a $2 charge for the uh, carousel. That's not bad. No? Yeah. So what did you guys think about the new carousel right here? It was wonderful. It's absolutely fantastic to see it here at the Detroit Zoo. Uh, we loved it. The girls had a really good time and uh, a lot of different animals to choose from. The new lion exhibit, you can get really close. You can get <laughs> really close. Oh my goodness, yes. You, she's not necessarily happy about that. They're getting used to being so close to people yeah but uh, before we had a big moat here right. so and put in this glass wall which is 17 feet tall so how are they adjusting to the wall well great I mean you know when they first came out uh, they took a look and sort of surveyed the area and wondered whether you know they had any opportunities and they don't so uh, <laughs> but they've been doing fine it uh -huh. just uh, they're, they're getting used to just as we're getting used to being close to them right. they're getting used to being close to people yeah I'd imagine the Public, the response from the public is pretty neat to be so close oh, yeah. and personal to the lions. People get very excited. Yeah. Now, what you're seeing is she's actually on a heated rock. It's not on right now, but in the winter time, mm -hmm. there are some special areas here which are kind of warming spots for them. Uh, and then they have this great, wonderful carpet, basically, which is a lawn out there, and uh, they uh, they have a pretty good life. Yeah, they've got. And they do what the lions shade. do in the wild, which is spend 90% of their time resting, mm -hmm. and every now and then they get up and eat and drink. It's great and the lions seem to really enjoy it. They're out and really active today which is always good when we bring the little ones. Yeah so he really seemed to be enjoying it too. Did you like being up close to the lions? Do you like the lions Wade? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm Mufasa. Oh just like Mufasa. Oh. <laughs> This is science on a sphere. So if we were about a thousand miles in space looking at Earth, uh -huh. we would see what's here, and it is a visual representation of Earth. Uh, we have several hundred different types of programs that show what's going on in the environment, which of course connects us to the animals here and the exotic places that they come from. And now let's turn it upside down and we'll show you the North, here's the North Pole right here quick beginning of another program. This is also about, the uh, no, this is actually about climate okay. and water. 
and how they interact. Oh, wow. But you can see this is really incredible technology. There are four projectors projecting onto a sphere. The sphere is not moving. And then the computer bends the light so it fits properly and is seamless. It feels like it's moving. Yeah. Here you see the comparison between Earth and Mars and Venus and the moon. And it's really, yeah, the yeah. possibilities are amazing. There's only one other zoo, and that's the National Zoo that has this. And then there are a number of science centers here and uh, in, in other countries that have it. So we're all part of a network trying to make science a little more understandable. Well, Ron, lots of great reasons to come visit the zoo again, which brings up a point that a lot of people sort of think of it as a summer attraction, but I want to know what makes it a destination during other seasons? Well, not surprisingly, this place is all about nature, and nature is spectacular all year long. But you know, when you come here in the fall, in the winter, in the spring, mm -hmm. it's different. Everything is different. The seasons change, the animals change. You know, you come here after a fresh snowfall and you're likely to see the tigers playing in the snow and you'll see wolverines doing snow angels and the snow monkeys will be in their hot tub. You know, they, we should probably serve them drinks when they're in there. It's just they have so much fun. And then, of course, you know, in the fall and the spring, this is so beautiful. There's so many gardens here and uh, the animals tend to be more active when it's cooler. They do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, a lot of great reasons to come to the zoo any time of year. And I want to say thanks so much. Mark. Thank you for being here. restaurant in downtown Detroit. It's an elegant restaurant known for special occasions. You get dressed up to come here. But up on the third level, they have a special place called the Ghost Bar. We're going to do a little investigating to find out why they call it the Ghost Bar. So come on. Going up there. Well, here we are on the first floor of the Whitney. It's very beautiful. This is where you have your dining experience, but we're headed upstairs to the third level, the ghost bar. Well, I'm coming up to the second level, and I see how all this ornateness can line, kind of lend itself to a spooky feel, like, like for instance, the claw here on the light fixture. And I don't know if I'd want to be here alone at night, but I'm going to go keep going. Now one of my favorite parts about dining at the Whitney is that you get to walk around the second floor. You're just free to wander. They've got all these little secret side rooms. You can look at all the ornateness and of course the piano. Stories are that this piano has been heard to play on its own. And of course it's underneath this picture of this little boy who stares at you no matter where you go. Look, at, I'm moving here, I'm moving here. His eyes are following me. I don't know, I'm getting goosebumps just, just looking at it. <laughs> Here I am heading up to the third floor and I hear the piano music going and I know confidently it's from the first floor, not the second floor. Cross my fingers. Oh, and it's beautiful. This can't be haunted. It's too pretty to be haunted. Well, there have been rumors of ghosts. Uh, there's been, uh, there was a knife incident in which a knife fell uh, off the third floor staircase and landed straight up into a cutting board three floors down. There was nobody in the third floor. There was an old manager who claims that he spent a good 15 minutes chasing and walking, following an individual around uh, after he had already closed and locked up and thought the person was trying to sneak into the building and to no avail never found anybody and finally gave up. Mm. Um, there have been pictures with spooky things popping up. There was a woman that was taking a picture of the second floor to show okay. her daughter who was planning on having a wedding here. Um, and there were some ghostly images that came up on the picture. Really? That um, 
of individuals that were not present at the time the picture was taken. You do have paranormal dinners every we so do, often, right? We do have paranormal dinners that we okay. do every so often where there is a tour of the uh, facility. This is a Whitney Hour special? Or this, just is a, this, is, this is a Whitney Ghost Bar special. Whitney. This is our Flaming Seafood Tower. We have split lobster tails and Flaming Sambuca Shrimp. Uh, on the second, we have mussels there, and then on the bottom, we have split king crab legs along with shrimp cocktail. That is the Sambuca. And that is our flaming seafood tower. Wow, impressive. Little more than I could take, pity for pity's sake. Sometimes it kept me away. So a little less spooky out here, actually quite inviting. Yes, yes, a little more, uh, a little more open, mm -hmm. a little more green, uh, you know, very uh, Michigan-y, if you will. Uh, we're going to have the garden out here, we're going to have live music seven days a week, and uh, we're going to run different dinner specials every night. Mm -hmm. We've been doing garden parties for uh, 20 years now, so boil in some lobsters right now as oh. we speak. Hey, well, Tony. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for coming out. Yeah, and I think I'm going to sneak back in and dare I wander the Whitney alone? Hey, <laughs> I wouldn't go alone, but you know, hey, you're more than welcome to wander. <laughs> I'm going to. What are you making here? We got a uh, marinated chicken breast right now, and we're going to put a little barbecue sauce on it for our barbecue chicken. Okay, and you get that nice grilled flavor because it's all here on an open flame. Exactly. <laughs> all right, I'll let you do it. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Well, how much fun you get to be outside. <laughs> I know, my favorite. And so what, what would you recommend to somebody coming to the garden bar? Well, on a day like today, uh -huh. when it's a little warmer out and you might need something to cool down and relax with, my yeah. personal favorite is going to definitely be the cucumber uh, valentine martini drink. Cucumber valentine martini. That sounds yeah. yummy. And it's not necessarily a traditional martini. It's more of a cocktail. Mm -hmm. But uh, So first what I do is I take a scoop of our cucumber puree Ooh. that we make mm -hmm. using the finest of cucumbers. And then we use the finest of vodkas, my personal favorite, Valentine made in uh, Ferndale, Ooh, right local. down the okay. road. Oh yeah. yeah. A little pour here. Oh, here we go. Here's right. our drink. So and let me throw one more of these. Wait a minute, so what did, you add? what did you add to it? That was just a slice of cucumber. Oh, a slice of cucumber and a little and club a soda. And a little bit of club soda. Okay. And uh, let me know what you think about okay. that. Oh, that's nice and refreshing. Oh, thank you. It yeah. is. Oh, I see why it's your favorite. Yeah, yep. very nice. <laughs> you know, I love cucumber water too, so it's a nice spin on that. Right. Club and soda we've been dessert. thinking about taking our vodka nice. and maybe chopping up some cucumbers yeah. and letting oh, it sit in there because yeah. that lends a really, really light, wonderful cucumber flavor to the vodka. Okay, I'll be back favorites. for that. I'll, I'll be here. I'll see you then, okay? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yep. So what's a trip to the ghost bar without their signature drink, the ghost martini? Now you're mixing this up for me, and I know you don't have any particular ghost stories yourself, but let me ask no. you this. Would you be here alone by yourself at night? Yeah, I you am all would. The time. Really? <laughs> all by yourself? Yeah. Nobody else in the house? And no well, story? Well, see? Maybe one person uh. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> This is beautiful. Very haunting. Yeah. I love the color. Can I drink it right yes. now while it's uh, I think it goes strong. Mmm. Oh, it's fun to drink. It's nice and citrusy. It's yeah. and it's so much fun. Well, there you have it. The ghost martini at the ghost bar only in the day. Thanks, Beverly. Welcome.
Plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Head to Shane Park for the funky and unique Universe Soul Circus, and Plymouth welcomes Autumn with their Fall Festival. Visit downtown Rochester's Art and Apples Festival, and enjoy food, music, and more at Dally in the Alley. Northville's Victorian Festival revives the romance of the 1800s, and WWE broadcasts their Night of Champions from the Joe. Catch Detroit's creative side around town at the Design Festival, and see the Outdoor Boat Festival at Lake St. Clair Metro Park. Detroit Restaurant Week offers discount dining and the Family Reunion Planning Seminar offers free help. Keep your bikes out for the Tour Detroit ride. Then cruise with old blue eyes aboard the Ovation Yacht. Learn about astronomy and go stargazing at the beach. And CMA Entertainer of the Year performs at the Palace. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. Hey, that unmistakable Motown sound. I'm at Hitsville, USA, right here in Detroit, where it all began. Walk the same floors where the legends walked. See where it all began. Check out the engineering room. Do your best Supremes or Temptations song or dance in Studio A. Plus, see a whole bunch of mind-blowing memorabilia. The Velvelettes, Needle in a Haystack. The Supremes, I Hear a Symphony. Heat Wave by Martha and the Vandellas, all part of Motown Girl Groups, the grit, the glamour, and the glory. We're really proud of this new exhibit that we have, Girl Groups, the Grit, the Glamour, the Glory. And it's about the glorious part of being a star at Motown and all the wonderful things they got to do on stage and recording, but also the grit, you know, the tough part of it too. We showcased the five female groups that were part of Motown's history, the Andantes, the Marvelettes, the Velvelettes, the Supremes, and the Vandellas. And one thing that we're really proud about in this exhibit is not only did we, were we able to give equal billing to each group, but we also were able to showcase a group who before now did not get as much exposure, the Andantes. Andantes, yeah. Yes. You know, they recorded on more than 20,000 Motown songs. When you hear songs like, I Can't Help Myself, or uh, Reach Out, I'll Be There by the Four Tops, or uh, Standing in the Shadows of Love, or some of Marvin Gaye's greatest hits, like How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You. That's the Andantes back there with those angelic high background voices. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So those three young ladies, Levaine Demps, uh, Marlene Barlow, and Jackie Hicks. And they were so, so, so much in demand as background singers, unfortunately, they did not get a chance to get any of the glamour and the glory, except, <laughs> <laughs> except for the fact that they were able to uh, stay fully engaged mm -hmm. for the entire time that Motown was here. So they were always in demand. Here we have the Marvelettes. So they came down, mm -hmm. auditioned, mm -hmm. were not successful the really? first time. No. They came back with a song called Please Mr. Postman. <laughs> Number one hit the first time. You can see in different times in the Marvelettes history there were three, there were four, there were five ladies in the group. See if you can pick out who might have been a Marvelette, and then a Velvelette, and then a Vandella. Okay? You're gonna to have to come down to the museum and see that. We've got a challenge. <laughs> That's a little challenge there. Another group that we're very proud of, and they, they spend a lot of time down at the museum, are the Velvelettes. Uh, had great songs like Needle in a Haystack, 
you really stay saying something, these things will keep me loving you. Those, those were some of their big hits. And they actually got a chance to tour with Dick Clark. And there's a picture, I believe, there of them with Dick Clark. Needs no introduction, the Supremes. You may not have known that there were originally four Supremes, Diane, Flo, and Mary, but Barbara Martin was the fourth Supreme. She decided she wanted to start a family also, and so she dropped out of the group. They had about six or seven flops before Holland Dozier Holland uh, came up with Where Did Our Love Go? And the interesting thing I've heard is that Diane did not like the song. That little bit of an attitude that she had is what made the song so special. And as you can see, it's not uh, uh, a Hollywood set. You know, it was very, very modest. Mm -hmm. And it hurts so bad. And then, of course, the Vandellas. And you notice we call it the Vandellas, even though everyone knows them as Martha and the Vandellas. Right. Obviously, Martha is a very special and integral part of that group, and she is the cause that there is Martha and the Vandellas. Mm -hmm. She was the first female lead to be pulled out before there was a Diana Ross and the Supremes. Uh, their first song, Come and Get These Memories, which uh, to this day is the only only time that when, when a group performed on Dick Clark's American Bandstand, mm -hmm. they got a standing ovation and an encore. Wow. Yes, of course they went on to do many hits and then kind of our unofficial national anthem, Dancing in the Streets. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Martha. Thank oh, yeah. you, Vandellas, for uh, what, you've, uh, what you've contributed to Motown history. Well, Alan, I want to thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having us. We'd love to have you back again. This is a great new exhibit, a great reason to come to the Motown Historical Museum. If you haven't been here for a while, girls and guys alike will love the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Motown girl groups, the grit. The glamour. The glory. glory. <laughs>
what it's like in the deep. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you'd like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.